Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we try to nail down a serious uh -huh. topic. So check us out already. You can download Part Time Genius on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. If you live in San Francisco, you better come and see us at the Castro. <laughs> that was horrid, but really nice. I appreciate that. Yeah, so we are going to be, as the sound says, at the Castro Theater on January 14th for San Francisco Sketch Fest, Chuck. That's right. We go there just about every year now, and it's a lot of fun. And San Francisco, you always treat us so well. So I recommend we can get a stocking stuffer or two in the way of stuff you should have And there's an extra stocking stuffer we can get featuring just Charles W. And Chuck. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm doing my very first ever movie crush live oh. at the Punchline. And I am having yeah, a that, chance, Mr. Tony That's why he's a drive through into of there, look. In Arrested Development. And that'll take me into the airfield. Himself, and, oh, and, which is know, the other right? side of where we go. Punch Trunk yeah. Love, and uh, it is at 1 p.m. You can double dip that day. See me at 1. See stuff you should know at night. And I am even going to be doing a little meet and greet before and after. Fantastic. So this is why they call you the hardest working man. <laughs> that's right. And you can get tickets for Movie Crush Live at bit.ly slash Movie Crush. Yep, and you can get tickets for our uh, Sketch Fest show at SYSKLive.com. And there's still a few tickets left for Seattle the following day on January 15th. So SYSKLive.com. Um, you like my new movie clock? Movie Correct. Right. Good, isn't it? Right. Good, isn't it? Good, isn't it? Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Josh Clark. With Charles W. Chuck Bryant and Jerry. The three of us were just lobotomized, so we're feeling this one. Lobe of death. That's right, or, or, <laughs> because it's huge down in South America, El Globo de la Muerte. <laughs> Which I, I think I prefer that one. El Globo de la Muerte. El Globo de la Muerte. Jerry? She does that it. too. Good job. <laughs> Man, I think she did it better than anybody. Oh, Jerry actually speaks Spanish. That's right. She's not a baker like us. Uh, no, she's not. I'm so mad I didn't learn Spanish. Are you? Oh yeah, you did German, I did French. Just so dumb. Like, how helpful would it be to know Spanish now? It would be pretty helpful. I would love to chat it up with Spanish-speaking people I see every day in my life. Uh, yeah, well, you, it's never too late to learn, Chuck. You know what they're saying about me. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Yeah, it's too late. I'm, it's over. No, it's not. I'm saying it's not too late. No, no, no. It's too late. I'm not learning any longer. I, I think it's late. I'm going to go learn Spanish just to show you. Oh, so you can talk about me in Spanish? <laughs> yeah, me and Jerry can. Uh, so, Chuck. Yes. We're not talking about learning Spanish or whether it's too late to learn language. Because it is. It's not. Uh, we are talking about, like you said, the globe of death. Also known as the um, globe of steel. Yeah. Yeah, apparently that was a Ringling Brothers marketing department invention, the PR department invention. We can't, oh, no. death. we can't have like a globe of death at our circus. We don't want anybody to see our elephants and start thinking about death. About fear of fear. That's a good one too. Uh, what about the um, 360 degree circle of intimidation? <laughs> I just came up with that one. Not that great, huh? We should no. That's great. Uh, we should tell people what we're talking about because I can sense the frustration weeks from now mm -hmm. brewing with angry listeners. Sure. Already. So, the globe of death, what we're talking about is if you've ever been to uh, a circus or a fair. A fair. And we're by the way, fair. this is, we thought we would never add to the circus arts suite. Here yeah, it is. Here it is. There's still more to come. Uh, what? County fairs, state fairs. Sometimes, like, um, like if you have like a pretty good um, music festival, they might have something. Oh, like okay. Maybe a James Addiction show? Who knows? Yeah? What, uh, what's the, uh, the World's Fair? Remember those? Oh, man. They still have them, but they're just not the same any longer. I think the U.S. pulled out of them a decade or two back. I think the internet killed it. As a matter of fact, you're absolutely right. That's what I read. Because I, I, just the other day, I was thinking, like, um, whatever happened to the World's Fair? And it turns out they're still there. They're called, like, International Expos or something now. Yeah, um, and, the, yeah, they are just, they're just not as interesting. It's, um, it's not about like the future, and, and they specifically said that it's just the internet. And now you can go on the internet and find all that stuff without mm. leaving your home. Mm, it's really so much. That's one we're looking at. <laughs> so, Globe of Death, what we're talking about. We could be on the Bush Room within the no, no, daily. No, 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 no. 
uh, is if you've ever been to the circus of those places, they might have this attraction wherein there is a, uh, a steel sphere. Mesh. Steel you've mesh. seen the globe of death, John. Yeah, Do you remember? Uh, but you can still see it's there. It's not invisible. Yes, that no, no, in Malta. <laughs> when we went to the circus, uh, there was there that big, big ball. Oh, yeah, usually no, more no, than no, one no, motorcycle no, riding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the globe of death. Of a, of a globe. Um, around and around, horizontally, Why vertically. Why did you die? No, no, it's, it's yeah, just that potentially you could and die when you're and, 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 yeah. driving around the globe, you know? One person doing this. This article is kind of boring. I wholeheartedly disagree, and I would like to see the author try to do it, right? Well, yeah, sure. But compared to, like, you got four or five people in there. Right. And then a lady standing in the middle smoking a cigar. Right. That's another. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> juggling baby. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's a baby yeah. juggler. Um, and I think the, the record that I saw, somebody was trying to break seven and, and do eight motorcyclists in a sphere at wow. once. Um, I didn't see anyone had actually done it. There's been a lot of talk about it, but I didn't see anyone who had done it. Um, oh. Seven is the most that I've seen. Well, Although I've seen the oh, final nines on video. Eight. Oh, wow. Um, I like just, oh no, I'm sorry. Up. Seven is the most I saw that with my own eyes on video. But it is, it's amazing it because, smoke. you know, they'll, they'll follow one another in a circle, which is pretty cool. But then one will, like, break off. It's the air, it's because the air is quite cold. To the other circle, yeah. and they'll just, like, just... You don't get that in Malta very often. Yeah. It's just a, an amazing feat of... It doesn't feel like, cold. Um, nah, we all wrapped up quite well, Coming together in the visual... Yeah, yeah. Which we'll get to. I think, 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 think. I might have it figured out physics-wise. This is kind of a rehash of the Sun episode, as hard as it is to understand. Oh, I thought that was going to be that bad. Oh, well, then you take it. Oh, no, I'm not taking it. No, you take it. But right? I just saw, like, a few basic principles, and bing, bang, boom. Well, my brain broke trying to figure it out. And I think I got it, but I also may have gone insane and come up with a completely, entirely um, different interpretation of reality. Well, you're on a podcast. Yeah. I'm Josh Clark. So I must be nice. Uh, you and I want to see one of these things. Is a uh, looks like we'll decide for it. Or a monkey. Yeah, it's cigar smoking. Uh huh. It's a bit wet, isn't it? Yeah, because that's what monkeys are put on. It was raining. To do. Monkeys are side cars while we moving around towards the set. All right, should we go into some history here? Because I was very surprised to learn that the globe of death was invented and patented in 1904. Yeah, I, I thought it was invented even before that. Oh, well, sure problem. Uh, it was sometime in the 1890s in Europe, somebody came up with this act. Crazy. But yeah, it is surprising. You'd think this would be like 70s Daredevil era kind of stuff, right? Sure. But no, the 19th century is when it was first invented. And here's the, here's the gas of the whole thing. <laughs> the original one, the original globe of death was ridden in on bicycles. Metal fast, sir. And unicycles. That's super fast. What? Could you imagine yeah. riding a bicycle around yeah, that big dome getting fast enough? As we will Goodness learn later me. in the physics, uh, in the post abstract physics section, mm -hmm. uh, it's all about speed. It is very much about speed. How did they do this on a bicycle? Well, I don't think they did the loop to loop. I think that came later. After well, the okay, so they just did sort of uh, horizontal -ish circles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which, which I'm sure if it was the 1890s, you'd be like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, sure. I live in Wisconsin and I'm preoccupied with death and horribleness, so this is a real relief. So, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan were, was where the first one was patented by a man, a bicycle stuntman named Arthur Rosenthal. And uh, he had a stage name, Arthur Rose. He had a partner, Mr. Frank Lemon. I know, that's it. Lemon Rose. I love that Rose today. Lemon Rose? That sounds very nice. Doesn't it? Pleasant. Um, it's not selling the door, but... No, but it's close. Yeah. It's in a different direction. It should be like a type of gum. Sugar free gum. Sugar free lemon rolls? Mm hmm. Mm. I don't even chew gum and I chew that. Yeah. Uh, so they would do like these little, you know, 10, 15 minute routines. Uh, here's a quote from one of the state fairs uh, Routines of skill and nerve guaranteed to deliver laughs and roars. Mm -hmm. But they, again, like that. they were on bikes. Bike. Yeah. So what, I, I guess around 1910s. The motorcycle started to become a little more ubiquitous, a little more affordable, and the first thing that people did with them was put them in the globe of death. I don't know about the first, but sure. <laughs> they, would, they cast their bikes aside and said, I've got plans for you, motorcycle. Where have you been all my life? That's right. So they started riding these things, and um, it just spread like further and further afield. I guess it started in Europe, made its way to America, because the Arthur Rosenthal was from Grand Rapids, Michigan, right? Yeah. Um, and it moved down to South America in pretty short order. So 
I think by 1912, there was a guy named Jose Urias um, who had built his own globe of death um, back then and was riding in it as well uh, down in Brazil. And his family's actually still around and still performing the Urias Brothers uh, Globe of Death Act. Yeah, remember our Circus Families podcast? Oh, were they, they were in that, huh? I think they were either in it or, it, it, you know, I was just pointing out generally, like, you do something like this and the kid's going to probably grow up and do something like this. Right, exactly. You know, it's a family trait. Yeah, now, now they're up to the great 